COVID-19 pandemic, an independent investigation, challenging the narrative, reclaiming our future by Andrew Johnson. Johnson. I'm going to read just a bit of this today. Here's the introduction. In this report, claims, assumptions, facts, and evidence relating to the alleged COVID-19 pandemic will be critically analyzed and reviewed. reviewed. The rationale, rationale for doing this is to illustrate that our current measures are inappropriate, even unlawful, and should be lifted immediately. COVID-19 assumptions and claims. Let's apply some logic to the current situation. The claim is that an assumed to be deadly infectious virus has spread across the world from Wuhan, China, and we need to take steps to stop the effects and prevent the spread of the disease. Number one, it is alleged a test can detect the infectious novel virus, and that's in quotes, SARS-CoV-2. This claim is based on the use of a PCR test. Number two, this novel virus has killed tens of thousands of people worldwide or more. Number three, the SARS-CoV-2 virus is highly infectious. Number four, the SARS-CoV-2 virus is though therefore dangerous, even fatal, and so extreme measures must be taken to deal with the threat. There's a note that from this point forward, we'll use the term COVID-19, which is the name given to the <clears throat> disease allegedly caused by the SARS-CoV-2 virus. Logic dictates that if we call into question any or all of these claims, we must also call into question the claims of a pandemic. Further, if the pandemic claims are unfounded, governments must withdraw reverse measures which are claimed to mitigate the effects or magnitude of the alleged pandemic. Claim number one, this is a novel virus. This claim is based on the result of one or more tests and it seems it's mainly the result of a PCR or polymerase chain reaction test that is being used to support this novel virus claim. In March of 2020, this claim was called into question in a paper by G.H. Wang et al. Additionally, the commonly used test for COVID-19 is not a gold standard. It is a surrogate test, where an effect of the virus is tested for, not the virus itself. Further, the COVID-19 virus has never been purified and identified by itself, and none of the tests appear to be very reliable. In a video of Dr. Wolfgang Woldarg, a German physician specializing in pulmonology, he states, politicians are being courted by scientists. Scientists who want to be important to get their money for their institutions. Scientists who just swim along in the mainstream and want their part of it. And what is missing right now is a rational way of looking at things. We should be asking questions like, how did you find out this virus was dangerous? How was it before? Didn't we have the same thing last year? Is it even something new? Wodar goes on to outline how the COVID-19 test was developed and compares it to similar tests. A BBC story from Feb 13th of February, 2020 raised concerns that the COVID-19 test generates too many negative results, not false positives. But the basic concern should be the accuracy of the test. A story from RT on April 9, 2020, also raises questions about the reliability of the test. The headline reads, Unbeatable virus or false positive? Doctors alarmed after some COVID-19 patients test positive after recovering. If, as Dr. Waldark says, it's not really clear that this is a new coronavirus and that this test was unreliable, it would explain the circumstances described in both these articles. For example, the virus is not being correctly identified, and it can therefore be found in people who have never been to China, or may never have had any contact with the source of infection, or the reverse can be true, and that people who express symptoms test negative for COVID-19, and then health workers think they have misdiagnosed the patient. 
This then brings up an associated possibility in that the diagnosis becomes so oriented toward the COVID-19 that other serious problems a you know, patient can be overlooked or missed. Such a situation was discussed in a letter to the Lancet titled COVID-19 and false positive dengue serology in Singapore, published the 4th of March, 2020. Additionally, the president of Tanzania, John Megafuli, sorry if that's wrong, intervened in the country's initial use of COVID-19 testing kits and found that even though a pawpaw fruit was swabbed from the flesh inside, it tested positive, and so did a goat. He describes the fun findings in his address. Implications of an inaccurate test that gives too many false positives. If inaccurate inf identification and testing is so difficult or questionable, how could any measures developed to deal with the virus be deemed appropriate? if it's not even known reliably whether or not it's a novel virus. What if, as some say, the truth is that the majority of the people already have the coronavirus in their system, as seems to be the case with some bacteria and viruses generally? Doesn't this then mean that more people are being tested for COVID-19, the greater the number of positive results we'll see? The pandemic will then seem to be worse and worse, and won't the restrictions therefore increase or kept in place for much longer? And let's talk about symptoms. As is commonly stated, COVID-19 has no particularly unusual symptoms, just a high temperature and a persistent dry cough. So COVID-19 cannot be directly identified from its symptoms. Some people have unsurprisingly reported experiencing COVID-19 symptoms in the winter of 2019, months before the alleged outbreak which is perfectly in line with the normal pattern of flu-like illnesses increasing in frequency during the winter and early spring months. So let's look at part three of two. What if nearly everyone has the virus? Dr. Andy Kaufman, who is a psychiatrist with a BS from MIT in molecular biology, is one of several doctors who argues that the virus has been misidentified which would also explain why the test is unreliable. In an online presentation he gave in March of 2020, Dr. Kaufman suggested the virus may actually be an exosome. Exosomes, which most people have in their bodies, are produced as a result of cellular damage. Cellular damage can be caused by the ingestion of toxins, physical trauma, and from other effects. If Kaufman is correct, then the implications for detection of virus are enormous. Claim two of two deaths, death rates, and reporting. Since early 2020, it has often been claimed or implied that COVID-19 is killing and will kill lots of people, and that it is one of the main reasons for imposing such severe measures. However, this claim can be called into question by considering the reported death numbers and how these deaths are classified. Regarding models and projections, the UK government has based a lot of its decision-making on the models and estimates created by Imperial College London. Any model or estimate is only as accurate as the data being used to create it. The data for these models is taken from the European Center of Disease Control, which in turn takes its data from a number of different sources, but is based on cause of death noted on death certificates. We can also note that the Imperial College has greatly reduced the initial estimations of death that would be caused by COVID-19 infection from 500,000, that's a half a million, to 20,000. And April posting by software specialist documents many problems related to the code used by Neil Ferguson to generate a half a million death figure. COVID-19 death reports reviewed in Italy. 99% of those who died from virus had other illnesses, Italy says. A Telegraph, a Daily Telegraph article from March 23rd, 2020, the way in which we code deaths in our country is very generous in the sense that all people who die in hospitals with the coronavirus are deemed to be dying of the coronavirus. On April, 25th, 2020, Italian MP Vittorio Scarabi, 
passionately stated in parliament that italians had been lied to about the figures and that we must be united against dictatorships and united in truth let us not make this a house of lies he talked about the false numbers that are given to terrorize the italians this mirrors what seems to have happened in the uk where the effects of the alleged pandemic were felt for a few days or weeks later than in Italy. And the same has happened here in the U.S., which is disgusting. This has locked down our world. I will record more of this at another date.